Hi everyone, this is Dr. Adela Fees and welcome to Life Whispering Club for the month of May. And you are all here because it is May the Month of Miracles and we are talking about creating a miracle business. But it's not May, it's June right now. So if you're wondering what the hell happened, um, I went to the Access 7 Day class in Langkawi in Malaysia and I came back and we did um, the month of May call around creating a miracle business. And that's obviously the energy that's been up and what's been on my mind um, as I go forward and go forth and keep creating. And I just knew that there was more to this topic and I knew that there was things left for me to uncover, unhinge, and to really go that one step or that multiple steps beyond where we had already gone in that call, um, the first call in May. So what I'm doing is this is a special bonus call. It's for everyone that is in Life Whispering Club. It's for all the people who especially joined us for the month of May, the Creating a Miracle Business. And I'm also going to gift it to a whole lot of people. I'm going to put this online as a resource because I really do think um, the information for me, the information that I have gotten and how it's been changing my business right up until today when I am talking to you again and the things that have happened just today in preparation for this call um, are pretty amazing. So the three things that I was going to talk to you about anyway were creating an unpredictable business, relaxing into receiving, and money come. <laughs> because where is the money? <laughs> where, is, where is the money in all of this? And um, it leads beautifully into next month's topic as well, which is money as a byproduct of you. And we will get to that and we will talk about that briefly today as well. So um, there is so much information here and I'm going to do my best to not be all over the place and to... Well, I, I will be all over the place and um, good luck is, is where I will leave you with that. So... For those of you that don't know, I'm a chiropractor by profession, and so I have a couple of businesses in that. I have a physical brick and mortar business, which is a chiropractic practice or a family wellness center, where I do chiropractic and also kinesiology, offer bar sessions and facilitation sessions. And, and have people there that work for me and um, other practitioners and all of that kind of stuff. And then um, I have my Dr. Adela Fees business, which is what you are part of here, where I do facilitation around the world or um, online. I run my classes, my body whispering classes all over the world. And I have clients who see me for private sessions. And then my husband is a real estate agent and he has his own business within a business. Um, that's how real estate works in New Zealand. And so that's part of what I do or I support him in that. So those are, those are the three main businesses that I um, am in or involved with. And so when I went to Malaysia, um, the, the one conversation I did have with Gary is, um, and so the big, one of the big pieces that came out of um, Malaysia was around the Access 7 Day class in Langkawi, was around how being predictable with your life um, and trying to have predictable outcomes, predictable relationships, predictable business, that's what's killing um, you or the creation of those things. And so the one conversation I had is I said, I have been working really hard to create a predictable business with my chiropractic clinic because that's what I thought was required. That's what, um, that's how business works in this reality. And so while with my business and my facilitation work, I'm more than happy to be unpredictable and to create um, a bit more out of the box with my chiropractic practice I was really trying to keep things predictable and Gary said a few things and I heard probably 
one or maybe two sentences and then I've gone back and listened to the recordings and the stuff in that has absolutely blown me away and one of the things that I heard um, only today when I re-listened to it is he said um, that rather than trying to create with my business and see how much money I could create with it I was trying to make it predictable so that I could make sure it created a set amount of money each week. And I went, what? And then I went, oh my gosh, I have not been trying to create with my business. So with business, I, when I do business facilitation and when I work with people, I always talk about the fact that, you know, your business is an entity of its own. Your business has, a, just like with Body Whispering, the next thing is business whispering. So your business is an entity. It has awareness. It has consciousness. It has the ability to gift you information and awareness and to um, give you a sense of what will create the most for you, create the most success create the best outcomes for you um, if you're willing to receive that information and one of the things that I always say to people is start to have that conversation with with your business and one of the best ways to do that is when um, is to just to have no point of view about the information that you're going to receive and to get out of your head and for me, what works best is when I go out for a walk or a run or I'm doing some form of exercise. It's when you're not actually intently um, sitting there in a rut trying to break through um, a certain a certain block that you've come up against and that's when you're sitting there going okay what do I need to do and how do I work myself out of this situation what do I need to do it's rather what information does your business have for you what awareness can it gift to you that if you stepped back a little bit and were open to receiving that information that awareness would give you the missing piece in your business and so for me, when I'm out in nature, when I'm out going for a run, when I'm out going for a walk, those are the times where I tap into my business and I say, okay, Vital, it's called Vital Chiropractic. Um, what's going on for you? What do you need? What do you need from me? Do you need me to do anything here? Uh, do we need to institute something here? Is this the right person for this? All of those conversations are conversations you can have with your business. Um, and so that part, I, I thought I got, or I, I, I knew that part of it. But the piece that I got today around creating with my business and seeing what, how much money we could create together, rather than me needing to be the boss or the employer or the person responsible in this equation for my business. So this is the conversation I had with my business today and it's, it blew me away. So I said to my business, um, I said to Vital Chiropractic, the clinic, I said, okay, so what's required here? Because I have come back from Malaysia and the other thing that Gary said that I heard on the recording is he said, you are bored to tears. You are so bored <laughs> that you don't know that you want to kill yourself. And there is... Th Obviously, it's, there's truth to that. I was getting to a stage where I had taken on all of the responsibility for this business. And in order to be responsible, I was controlling it. And by controlling it, I was making it smaller and smaller and more and more predictable. And I was so bored today that I was, I then being the person that I am, would then go to the other extreme and would probably end up doing something like walking away or leaving or saying okay well that was fun for two years what what can I do now what um, and and leave as opposed to actually asking um, what else is possible here so when this um, when I listened to these things today I then went out for my morning run and on the way back I started kind of just 
the stuff's just started playing in the back of my mind. And so I said, okay, so vital chiropractic, what, what do you want to be? Do you want to be a chiropractic practice? And the answer was no. Okay. <laughs> do you want to be um, one of the businesses under Dr. Adela Fee's chiropractor? Do you want to come along and be one of those businesses? No. What do you want to be? And it said, I want to be a conscious business. And I went, what? It told me it wanted to be a conscious business. And I said, okay, that sounds awesome. Or the awareness that I got, it was so light that this practice was going to create itself as a conscious business. It was going to create, um, and, and that was really the energy of it, that it was going to create itself. And the more questions I asked, the lighter and lighter I got, because literally the questions were then, okay, so what do I need to do? Nothing. What do I need to institute for you? Nothing. What do I need? Do I need to find you another chiropractor or other people to work in the practice? No. Okay, so when the right person turns up, will you just present them to me? Yes. Um, the, the practice was telling me that actually it was going to be a conscious business and um, it was going to be the person or the entity or the thing that was dictating or creating the way and all I had to do was be the mouthpiece for it I had to just be open to receiving the information it was trying to give me and to institute the things for it that it was asking for to be instituted because I'm the one in a body here that can do those things so I'm I can hire the staff or um, buy buy things for it or put things in or advertise things or pay for advertising in a particular way but basically this business was telling me that all of that stuff that normally um you know, you get real head trippy around that. You spend all this time in your head trying to figure out your marketing plan and figure out your staff and who you're going to hire and who you're going to fire and what your 12 month plan is and, and what your financial projections are and how much money you should be making. All of that stuff, this business said to me, you don't have to worry about that. I'm a conscious business. I'm going to create this you just have to go along with it and it's the coolest thing it's the coolest thing because i went from being potentially so bored with how i had been creating this business to be predictable to fit into what a chiropractic practice is meant to be like to look and smell and feel like what other chiropractic practices look and feel and smell like um to be a business in this reality but so that i could do my other stuff in the reality um, but I, I thought that I needed to make this business uh, do what it was meant to do um, from other people's points of view and it was so liberating to get that information and to realize that um, actually that that is actually what business uh, whispering is that is what having a miracle business is it's when the business is the generator and you are the mouthpiece or you are the puppet that does what the business requires of you and that means the amount of work that I suddenly have to do for and with this business has just been drastically reduced because I do have a sense of and this is how you know when you're in the flow and things seem to just fall in your lap that's what it's going to be like um, I know because it's been like that in the past or occurrences or instances of that have happened but imagine if I got out of the way so imagine if you got out of the way and allowed consciousness to come through your business and allowed your business to be the conscious entity that it is wanting to be and asking you to be and just asking you to get out of the way for and to contribute to to it being that rather than you needing to control it you needing to be the one making all the hard decisions you being the one that needed to think your way through this imagine how much easier imagine how much more fun imagine how much lighter you would feel about doing business
So everything that doesn't allow you to have that as a reality for how you do business and as a reality for um, what's possible no matter what business you're in, whether you, you're an accountant, whether you're a chiropractor, whether you're a body worker or a facilitator, or whether you're a clown in the circus, like that, this is, this is a blueprint for how any area of your life can go. And so business, there's no reason why business shouldn't be included in consciousness. And there's no reason why consciousness shouldn't be included in every single thing that you do. So that's basically the foundation or the, um, the basis now from which I'm going to be operating. And I'm going to be, so that's, yeah, that's the platform from which I'm going to be um, referring uh, referring to things when I talk about what I'm doing now. So it's not that I'm, um, so when I talk about all the things that I'm going to be doing in my business, that's a given that it's the business is the boss and I'm the employee or I'm working for it and I'm giving it things that it requires um, a physical body to do for it. But I'm basically open to receiving that awareness from the business and giving it what it requires to be successful. Because what we do is we think so much and we head trip so much that we limit our own success. We limit our own success. And actually, this is something else that Gary talked about in Langkawi is he said, how hard are you working to create the in incremental, so the small step-by-step -step success so that um, your success is predictable, so that other people understand it, so that you've done it in a way that other people can look at and recognize and, and validate and say, oh yes, you're going through the right steps to, to have a successful business. Yes, I saw you go through those steps from when you opened up or when you started your business to become um, eventually a successful business like how boring is that and how slow is that and how much as a humanoid does that make you want to shoot yourself because yes it is extremely boring and you would rather fail than need to do that drag that process out for seven years or however long it's meant to take for a business to finally be successful um, and turn over you know a million dollars or whatever it is so um, <laughs> everything that is <laughs> When you destroy and uncreate it all. <laughs> okay. So. My second point was about relaxing into receiving. So. <sighs> relaxing into receiving. This is where your body comes into and body whispering comes into what we're talking about with creating miracle business or doing anything with business is your body is part of the equation your body is the vessel through which you the being are experiencing life here on this planet and you the you the being is the entity that your business is communicating with and you are creating this miracle business with so your body needs to be part of this equation and relaxing into receiving there's two components to this one is I'll get to in a minute where it's about that bigger concept of receiving but firstly what I actually wanted to talk about is how with our bodies we um, we don't realize how much we receive with our bodies and how much we create with our bodies. And if we don't give our bodies that space, and if we don't relax with our bodies, we're not gonna create the same success. We're not going to receive the change or the miracle or whatever change or um, overnight success or wonder story that you're trying to create in your life. Um, when, when all of that stuff is in your head and it's about doing, 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 and you're working around the clock, you're not actually receiving. You, you're not actually giving yourself the time and the space, both figuratively and literally, to actually receive. And so the problem with that is many, but 
one of the things that we talk about in access is one hour a day and one day a week doing those things that are nurturing for you taking time out to be with your body or to enjoy yourself or to do something for you and your body and this is one of those things one of those exercises or one of those things that really get pushed down to the bottom of the list that really get you know everything else comes first um, working comes first family comes first tending to the kids comes first um, and then eventually when your body breaks down or you have a nervous breakdown um, you get yourself along to have a massage or to get your bars run or to um, have some one-on-one -on -one time with someone or to just take half a day off and lay in bed and it's about actually doing that stuff first and in another call I talked about how um, once when I really was at a point where I was like okay I really need to create some money really quick um, and then I went and I had a massage for an hour and while I was laying there having a massage the awareness of what I could do to kind of get that cash flow in in the next 24 hours occurred to me and I did it and it was great and so it's like this isn't about and it's not about doing it for that reason but just like I said to you at the beginning that I tell my clients to go out and to go and have that conversation with their business not when they're sitting there in their office in front of the computer thinking intently about what they need to do and trying to compute or trying to logically think through this conversation or have a logical conversation with their business. What I'm talking about is getting out in nature or doing something that's nurturing for you or going and watching a funny movie or doing something that's relaxing for you that allows you to take a deep breath, clear your mind and receive. So that when you receive that awareness, A, you're able to recognize it, B, you're able to hear or receive or understand the awareness. And C, you're in a place of reciprocity with that awareness. So you're not only willing to hear it and listen to it, but you're actually willing to take on that information or advice from your business and actually act upon it because it doesn't seem like such a crazy idea. I mean, in the middle of my run today, after I'd already done three Ks, my business suddenly tells me it wants to be a conscious entity of its own and I don't need to do anything else. It's going to take care of everything. That's pretty nuts. That's not something that most business coaches from this reality are going to think is a great business plan. And not what your banker is going to grant you your funds on if that's what you tell them your business plan is. So, but it's about being willing to receive that information and then most importantly, like we always talk about in these calls, trusting that information and actually acting on it. Actually acting as if that information is 110% legitimate, you 110% um, trust it. You trust your awareness, you trust the awareness you got from your business, and you're willing to act on it. And when that happens, you will get the result. You need to have faith in your own ability and in your awareness that what that awareness you received was correct, no matter how ludicrous or how counterintuitive or how counter business savvy it may seem. Okay? Um, and the other part of relaxing into receiving is, is about once you make that ask, once you say to your business, okay, business, what's it going to take to turn over a million dollars? Or what's it going to take to find the perfect person for this role that I'm looking for? Or what's it going to take for this situation with the tax return to turn out better than I expected? To then relax and to the faith and the knowing and the knowledge that the universe has your back, your business has your back, and it's working to give you the information, awareness, and outcome, the best outcome that can be created that you are asking for. As opposed to asking for that thing to happen, 
and then worrying about it and wondering about it and second guessing about it and head tripping about it and going around and around in circles with it and losing your sleep over it and not trusting your awareness and not trusting your business and basically winding yourself up until never into never believing it will happen never believing it will resolve itself never believing that you will actually get what you asked for and therefore what will the universe deliver it's going to it's going to deliver what you believe in your subconscious mind what your underlying belief is what whatever's playing out whatever you whatever is really true for you so if you're sitting there feeling heavy and stuck that is the outcome you are going to create. So relaxing into receiving is twofold. Relaxing into receiving means creating the space for your body and your being to relax and to enjoy and to receive the information. And then when you receive the awareness or information or you've asked the universe or your business for something, to then relax and wait for it to show up with faith and awareness. And you know, if you can ask, is there anything else that I'm required to do here? Is there anything else I need to be aware of here? Is there anything that I need to do different? But if the answer to those things are no, then you've actually just got to do what you said you were going to do, which is have faith that your business will deliver. Okay. And the third thing we were going to talk about is the money. Show me the money. So money, is that why you're doing business? To create money? Money is a byproduct of business. It should, it should be one of the reasons or one of the things that is is part of why you're doing business or is a byproduct of your business. Um, it's also often the thing that will screw people over and screw people up and make people feel like a failure and make people question what they're doing and make people think that they are not a success and that they should give up doing what they are doing and, um, and stop you from having this miracle business. So what do I mean by that? It's how much judgment of money and how much judgment of what you've decided a successful business is and how much does that only equate to monetary value and how much have you made money the sole purpose of your business and how much are you also not willing to then, even if that is the sole purpose of your business, um, why won't you then just receive the money? And all of those things that that brings up for you, what you now just try and create it. <laughs> because <laughs> why else do people do business if not for the money? <laughs> um, so money, money come. Money come, money come. Money comes as a byproduct and also as... Uh, in response to and as a return of energetic exchange and it really um, in this reality you see money being this thing that determines whether someone is a success or not or whether their business was a success or not and why that can be a real head trip is because if you're on the in, if you are in business and you have a business um, and you know what your figures are and you're looking at those figures and they are just not cut, cutting it, they are not what they need to be for you to be in profit. What you will do is you will determine that you are not doing a good enough job or you're not being successful financially and therefore your business is not a success and what you will not look at is what the business is actually doing what the business is creating what the business is um, creating for a greater future what the business is doing in terms of having an impact on other people how what you're doing and how you're doing it differently is changing the very way in which business is done 
and all of the other ways in which you and your business are a success that you have never acknowledged and because you've never acknowledged it it's not true and so because it's not true for you it keeps coming back over and over and looking at you in the face and you keep going well my business isn't a success and you keep perpetuating on yourself the belief that your business is not a success and the money is not there and so the money does not come and so and I can really speak to this because um my my business my chiropractic business is actually really successful it's it's actually doing things that um as much as i uh say that i tried really hard to make it a predictable business and that i was kind of killing it in the process of trying to make it uh similar enough to other chiropractic practices that I wouldn't be lynched for being a pseudo chiropractor. Um, what, what is true is that um, it was doing or it was creating so much more. I mean, when you have a practice or a business in which you're talking about consciousness, you're talking or sharing the tools of access, you are running bars and you're working with babies and you're working with children and you're working with adults. So all of these things were happening in my business uh, and are happening in my business. And so slowly over the, and it's only been, it's only just coming up to two years of me having this, physical business in New Zealand in this country and um, and then um, you know the business started getting attention people like we have amazing referral chains we have people who refer people who refer people who refer people we're getting well known and um, not only in the community but across the country we have lots of media opportunities, all of these things that are not really the norm for a chiropractic practice. Chiropractic actually doesn't do that well in the media normally. So the, um, all, and, we, and it normally doesn't have a whole lot of um, outward supporters. And, you know, my business and my practice has is affiliated with many mainstream and many big names here in New Zealand. And so these, these are all things that, have been happening for the last 18 months to two years and yet I would look at the financials and I'd look at where that business was tracking financially and while it was still tracking extremely well and while it had turned over a profit in its very first year and while it made more than enough money than what was required um, or that someone starting at fresh would um, would be happy with because I had this idea of what success was and how much money I wanted it to be making and thought it should be making. It took like it was never successful in my eyes. It was it I just couldn't understand, and this is where the head tripping would come in. Why I wasn't successful enough. Why my business wasn't succeeding. Why I wasn't good enough with um, getting this business to make money. And and I wasn't looking at all these other things. Um, I had defined success in my business primarily or solely on um, the monetary value of its turnover. Um, and not even its turnover, probably on its profit, which you know, for a business in its first year, it it's low. You know, your profit margins are low, um, and so it wasn't until I went until I stopped and I looked at a few things, and I and I really went, wow, this. This is a really cool business. This business has created so many cool things, and. And it's done it sometimes despite, despite me being in the way. Um, it really has created itself as a miracle business. And so what did I do to create uh, or contribute to that though, is the times that I wasn't head tripping and the times that I was smart enough to get out of the way and the times that I was smart enough to not care at all about what anyone else thought. And I was, what the one thing I, I was very conscious about um, and consciously made a decision about is that I wasn't going to try, um, like I bought my own business so that I didn't have to do anything 
the same way as anyone else. So I didn't have to practice chiropractic in a particular way that I could do whatever I wanted in my clinic. I could talk about whatever I wanted in my clinic. As I, and I wasn't going to be worried about keeping up with the Joneses. I wasn't going to compare my practice to other chiropractors. And that was probably my saving grace because I never worried about or looked to other chiropractors for validation. And I never looked to comparing myself to other chiropractors to valid to um, to see what I should be doing next in my business because I've been a chiropractor for long enough to know that that's not actually the reality that I wanted. That's not the um, the the end outcome for my business that I wanted. I knew there was something more, and so. In, in those moments when I would persevere and step out of my comfort zone and sometimes literally be terrified um, at potential backlash or reprimand and do, do those things anyway, and those things never happened. In fact, the more I did those things, the more people, uh, including other chiropractors, came up to me and said, wow, that is so cool what you were doing. Um, you know, how, how does it get better? And I was like, really? You just want me to keep doing what I want to do in my own business? And, and I can, and you think it's good? This is fantastic. So it was that, that, that was the saving grace that created this business. And so then like, you know, it's gotten to this point where it's created itself as a successful business. And the miracle in that is that I've done very little to hinder that, but I also haven't done that much to, um, to propel it apart from being me. Apart from being me and practicing and being in my business the way I want to be in my business and show up as me. And so the part of the part of creating a miracle business that is pertinent to you is that you need to show up and be the miracle that you be in your business. And a great conversation that I heard today um, that came through on my email from Crystal, Crystal Crawford was her question was, um, are you including yourself in your creations? How much are you trying to create your business or your bars class or your um, workshops or your family or anything that you do by looking at it as something external to you and trying to create for it or create, um, you're putting energy and you're putting things into it and that you're almost taking from you and putting it into that so that it can be created rather than including yourself in the creation of it. So imagine how magical your business would be or your money flows would be or any area of your life would be if you actually included yourself in the equation. Because I know you are magical. I know how capable you are. I know how good you are. I know how wonderful and miraculous you are, even if you don't get told that often enough, and even if you don't believe me nearly as much as you should. If you included yourself in the creation of your business, imagine what that would do for the success of your business, and imagine what that would do for your money flows. And imagine what that would do for all the people all over the world who are looking for you. So that's that covers the three topics, I believe, that we were going to talk about. So um, creating an unpredictable business. What can I do today to create an unpredictable business right away? Relaxing into receiving. Taking that one hour a day one day a week to really spend time nurturing your body and receiving receiving with your body receiving with your being and not only will you receive but it will open you up to receiving the awarenesses for all areas of your life including your business that you require to really exponentialize it's it's just one of those ironic things that you know they shouldn't work but it does where you you take time out of doing something and it actually creates more for it you 
you don't do what you're meant to be doing or you take a day off from work and you end up making more money. You say that you're not going to work on clients or with clients for a day and you end up attracting, you know, a major one the next or that day you get a call from someone who really wants to work with you. So it's actually being in a place of receiving rather than needing to work your guts out um, over and over again or slog your guts out and until all of the joy and all the receiving is gone. And then lastly, money come and realizing that the money will come and actually the money is coming. It's just all of the things that we're doing to actually stop the money from coming um, because of all of these things that we, I've talked about in this call today. So um, everything and anything that this call has brought up for you, will you now destroy and uncreate it all? And will you let me know what you think? Send me some feedback. And if uh, so, our next call, the next topic for Life Whispering Club is money as a byproduct of you. So, we're going to take this concept of receiving and creating money, and um, not just how it's applicable to in business, but across all areas of life. Basically, what if you could just live the life that you wanted? What if you could? What if you could travel the world, do what you wanted, hang out at the beach, I don't know, stay at home, watch TV, whatever's fun for you. And money was a byproduct of you turning up in the world and being who you are and doing what you do. Um, so that's the conversation we're having next time. And um, yeah, there will be some business whispering classes coming in the near future. So keep an eye out for that. So you can have a business whispering session in the meantime. Um, otherwise, yeah, take care, guys. And you are all wonderful. Be the miracle that you are and create the business miracles that you are able to create. And do let me know about them because I love hearing about business stuff. Um, I, re I do really enjoy it. So take care and uh, have a great night.